today we're going to be kind of relearning something that uh, we've gone over in the past, but uh, I was doing it in an improper way, and I knew there could be a, had to be a better way, and it's actually really, really simple, and um, somehow I just missed over it when I was learning the basics of Pi game. So basics uh, come in handy sometimes. So that's basically um, key presses, but not just key presses, but when a key is held down. Um, I've done Pi games before when you press a key and it says do this, but and then you have to wait for the key to press up, but there I would create variables. I did it in a very awkward, so, and some of you probably were going, Chris, you're being an idiot doing it that way. And I, I've always known there must be a better way, and there is a much simpler, better way to um, basically get what keys are pressed while, and see while they're being pressed. Not that they were just pressed down, but while they're being held down. So let's... Uh, I'm going to use Vim as my text editor, but as always, use the text editor that you prefer for creating scripts. I'll create a Pi game, uh, Python script called, called key.py. And as always, we start off with our shebang line, uh, which is just telling the operating system what interpreter to use, what environment to use. So we're going to say to use the Python environment here. Next, we'll say import Pi game and sys. Uh, those are just two modules that we're going to be using. And then from Pygame Locals, we are going to import all, which is overkill. And I know that, but that's how I do it. Um, then we're going to initiate Pygame. So Pygame initiate, or niche. And then we're going to create our screen object, our display object from the Pygame module. Uh, so we're creating an object called screen. It's going to use the Pygame module. Within the Pygame module, it's going to create an object, a display object. And then we're going to set the mode of that. And we'll set, um, it doesn't really matter, I'll say 600 by 400 here. So that's the width and height of the window. And we'll say while 1, we are going to um, then, now in the past, well, I'll show you first here we'll say for event so we're creating a variable called event and in this for loop each time it loops it's going to set the variable uh, event uh, looking at pygame dot event dot get so it's looking at basically all user inputs to put it simply and then we'll say within that loop if the events the variable we just created if it's type equals a pi game dot capital quit remember this is case sensitive and do remember that the indentation is important in python we're going to say sys dot exit we're using the sys module to kill our script um, and really we should kill pi game before that but i don't remember how to do that um, so next what we're going to do so that basically what that's saying is we have a window when the x in the upper right hand corner or left hand corner depending on how you have your your window manager set up. Um, when it's clicked, when the X in the window is clicked, close the window. But then we're also going to say elif, so else if the event, the variable we created, if its type equals key down and event dot key equals key k underscore escape. So when a key is pressed and that key is escape, then we will also exit our script using the sys module. And um, that's fine for doing that that way. It's going to check for the key down and then if that key equals whatever. But that's just checking to see if the key is pressed is hit. It doesn't check to see if the key is held down. Now in this case with escape, it doesn't matter because we're killing the script after it sees it once. Um, what we can also do, and this is better for games, let's say you have a character moving around because you don't want to have to keep tapping the key to get the character to move. And in the past I had, you press it once, it creates a variable, then constantly checks that variable, and then when the key is let up, then it changes the variable back. Very inefficient. And uh, if you saw my tutorial on um, using the Doom guy to walk back and forth across the screen, you know that you get problems with that uh, to where the uh, player doesn't if you hit both left and right at the same time, the player kind of gets stuck in place. So a better way to do that, we're going to create a variable here called key. And we're going to say that, well, that object is going to be equal to a 
the pi game module dot key dot get underscore pressed. Oops. So basically we're setting this object, this variable to, to look at this and get every key that's being pressed. And then we're going to look through it one at a time and see what key is being pressed. And if a certain key is being pressed, well, what we've done already is looking at the keys being pressed. Then we're going to say if a key, so we're using our object here, um, is a pi game dot, in this case I'll say key, uh, k underscore right, then, oh, and don't forget to close your brackets there before that. So when the, if the right key is being pressed and held down, then we will say um, print right. So this will print text to the screen. And then we'll say the same thing. We'll say if key Again, we're going to use pi game. If the pi game key of left, and this is case sensitive, so all capital with that, then we're going to print left. And we'll actually say left is being pressed. We do the same for up here is being pressed. Now, let's put a spa oops, space there. I like to just. If I typed everything properly, we should get a screen, a little display. Let's change it and make it executable first. This will allow the script to run without having to actually type out the word Python each time, basically. It's, it's saying it's executable, and it's telling your operating system to look at the first line, the shebang line, for what type of script it is. And then we'll say to run the key script. So dot slash run the script in the current directory. I'll hit enter there. Uh, the window's down here. The window's not really important because we don't have anything on it. But uh, when we're clicked in it, if I hit left, you can see in the terminal it's printed. Left is being pressed. And if I press right, it prints right. And you can see how fast it's being printed. I mean, you, can, you don't even see it going up. It's just the whole screen's changing. And um, that's because we have no uh, limit to how fast Pi Game's going. And um, at this point, I can hit escape and it exits out of the script. Um, let's go back into our script and we will create another object here. It will be a clock object. We're going to call it clock. You don't have to call it clock. But then we're going to use our pi game module, the time function within it, and then we're going to create a clock object. So clock equals pi game time clock. And then within our loop, what we're going to do, and you've seen me do this before, is we're going to say clock, and then we're going to use the tick function in that clock, and we'll say 30. And that limits it to, in this case, 30 frames a second. So basically, if you have a character moving on the screen, the speed of that character, because we're in a loop here, will depend on the speed of the person's computer. And although it may go good on current computers, 20 years from now, when computers are a lot faster, the character might move way too fast. You'll, you see this a lot with a lot of old, old DOS games, because they didn't put any limitations in them, because they didn't expect computers to be as fast as they are nowadays. So what I'll do is I'll save that, and now if I run that script, the it still detects when I press left and right, but you'll see it doesn't loop as fast, and you can actually see the word scrolling up the screen, and you can limit that, make it as slow as you want. Now obviously you set it to 100, doesn't mean that the game's going to go at 100 if the computer can only do 60 frames a second, it's only going to do 60 frames a second, but do using the tick prevents it from going more than that. Um, so... Not, not much you can do about a slow running computer and your game running slow, but you can prevent it from running too fast. Um, and that is it for this tutorial, uh, basically correcting um, or improving on what I've taught you in the past. Thank you for watching. And uh, please, um, if you're not at my site, please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description of this video. Um, I'll also try to remember to upload uh, this script uh, to there so you can have a look at that but I, I recommend you type it out yourself rather than copy and pasting that's the way you learn repetition um, also um, while you're at my site if you enjoy my tutorials and I do have a lot out there I ask that you may think about uh, donating to my site there is a donate button on my main page 
And if you feel like you like my videos, if you could donate just a few bucks, that would be great. Um, and um, I thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.